This is Family Worship Experience International, a place of worship, word, and intimacy. Join us as we take a walk into the life-changing Word of God with Apostle Jonathan Shokonya. Just lift your hands wherever you are in this building at the overflow. Praise the Lord tonight. Help me know you are here. I want to truly come to know you in more profound ways. I want to experience your glory. I want to experience your presence. I want to touch a reality in you. Go ahead, talk to the Lord. Lembraso bakatila bande preskatila. Kebarato Bokoski Balada Brenda Gati Shota Barada Bakaski Lada Dada Dada Dabash Lenta Rada Bakoso Babrianda Katila Lord, let me touch a reality in you tonight. Let me experience your presence. Let me experience your glory in more profound ways. Can you pray outside? Can you pray outside? Can you pray outside, inside? Come on, talk to the Lord. I want to know you in more profound way. Thank you for the experience of yesterday. But I know there can be more. I know there can be more. I know there can be more. Come on, are you praying outside, inside? Come on, are Zentelida brande koso batike lada braya. Zete balada brando so batila da 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 bench. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Precious Spirit of God. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for your glory. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for Lord tonight. You are set to change us, to transform us, to help us. And may no one be the same. Make mighty men out of us. Make great men out of us. We admit again that you are the captain of this host. Help us. Help us. Wherever you are, can you just be still? Just be still. Let me just have the keyboard. Just be still. Shalom everywhere. Peace. Just be still. satisfy me just be still I don't want you to sing just be still can satisfy my soul can satisfy my soul only you can satisfy me only you can satisfy my soul satisfy my soul Only you can say 
satisfy our hearts. Only you can satisfy our soul. There is a longing in my heart, and it's from the depths of my soul. It is a cry for the presence of a Lord. There is nothing in this world that can quench this hunger, Lord. And it is a cry for the presence of a Lord. There is a cry in my heart And it's for the glory of the Lord It is a cry for the presence of the Lord There is nothing in this earth That can quench this hunger, Lord It is a cry for the presence of It is a cry for the glory of the Lord. It is a cry and it's for the presence of the Lord. La Cabarata. It is a cry and it's for the glory, for the beauties of the Lord. It is a cry. And it's for the glory of the Lord. There is a cry in our hearts. And it's from the depths of our hearts. It is a cry for the glory of the Lord. There is nothing in this earth, not money, not influence that can quench this hunger lord it is a cry and it's for the beauty of the lord it is a cry and it's for the presence of the lord it is a cry and it's for the beauty of money cannot satisfy this hunger when you get money you will know that there is something money cannot satisfy influence cannot when you become influential you will attest not even the love of a woman can satisfy not even the love of a man so that as you pursue everything you think you need in life you should know that all of them put together cannot satisfy this hunger it's for the glory of the Lord it is a cry for the glory of the Lord it is a cry and it's for the beauty of the Lord Please, if you can, just be seated in God's presence. Take it easy with those under the anointing. Help them. You can put them in between the aisles so that you can have your seats to sit. It is a cry for the glory of the Lord. It is a cry, and it's for the beauties of the Lord. Then belly as I live, all for mass I bring. Let my whole life be an expression. Of your 
Let's proceed with our teaching tonight. If you can be seated. Holiness. Holiness. What I long for. Just be still, don't sing. Just rest in this atmosphere. Holiness is what I need. Holiness, holiness is what you want for me. Feels like this have been created. All you have to do is to soak and rest. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. Many of us carry burdens, worries, challenges. You can drop them tonight. Exodus 33. I'm lost without you. I'm lost without you, Jesus. I'm desperate for you. For you are my diet. For you are my diet. And my necessary food. Your presence is all I want. And I can live without you. You are my diet and my necessary food. Your presence is all I need, and I can live without you. Oh. Lord, oh, 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 with you, oh, 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 take me deeper, Lord, oh, 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 oh with you. 
it and my necessary food. Your presence is all I need, and I can't live without you. Last week we started a teaching on carrying the presence of the Lord. And tonight I want us to continue. But while you sit quietly, before I begin the teaching tonight, I'm sensing the Lord touching an individual somewhere. And when this happens, it's going to be the permission for this teaching. There is somebody I'm seeing that is going to scream under the power of God. There is an anointing coming on you. You won't be able to hold it. It's just one person or shots. You don't have to make the place rowdy. This will happen. There will be a scream. It's something you can't help. Kodaba skidabaya. So brande ketila da brasa tekela. Barande keski batala. Bratosa. Jesus. Jesus. My daddy, my daddy. Your baby is singing. I'll be singing and blessing you and worshiping to the end of eternity. My father, my father, my father, my father, I'll be singing, I'll be dancing to the end of eternity. Only you, only you, only you, only you, yeah. only you are God. Only you, only you, only you, only you, yeah. Only you are God. Only you, only you. Only you, only you tonight. Only you, only you. Only you are God. Only you, only you. Never leave me. You said that you won't forsake me. And you walk beside me And that is all that matters The sun will smite me And the moon it will not haunt me You walk beside me You are Please, if you can be seated. Ah. Proverbs, oh, sorry, Exodus. Exodus 33. Last week we started a teaching. Carrying the presence of God. And I shared with us, let me do a quick review of what we did last week and then we trust the Lord to build on it a little tonight and then we'll pray. I shared with us last week how that the presence of God is not just an atmosphere. I'm doing a summary, a recap, and then we'll proceed tonight. But how that the presence of God is a personality. And then that that personality is the Holy Spirit. 
when we say the presence of God is in a place, what we are saying is that the personality of the Holy Ghost has arrived. His arrival is what we call in church terms, the presence of God. I can feel the presence of God. The presence of God is in this house. Whenever you hear a statement like that being made, um, is an attestation to the fact that the presence of God has arrived or is in that place. And I tried to explain to us last week how that the presence of God um, has three dimensions. And that the first dimension is the omnipresence, his ability to be everywhere. That God can be everywhere. Whither shall I go from your presence? Where shall I go from your presence? He said, if I ascend to the heavens, the psalm is speaking, you are there. If I go beneath the earth, you are there. In hell, you are there. Wherever I find myself, he said, you are there. It revealed the omnipresence dimension of God. But how that there is, that's not all that there is. There is a second dimension of his presence. And that dimension is the what? The manifest presence. I know you were here. Don't forget. The manifest presence of God. The Bible says wherever two or three are gathered, that he is there in their midst. That dimension is not the omnipresence. That dimension is invited. That dimension goes into action whenever two or three are gathered in his name. That although the presence of God is in a bare parlor, he does not manifest there. What they have there is the omnipresence. The dimension of God that can be everywhere, but that they do not have the manifest presence there. That's the dimension that can be triggered. It is triggered when two or three gather in his name. And that that's not all. The third dimension is the Shekinah, the glory of God. How that when we gather in that atmosphere of his mass presence, and then we are able to follow the pattern there is a pattern you don't just have the shekinah in a place the pattern must be followed and i showed us last week how that um after moses has built the temple according to the pattern the bible said the glory of the lord showed up to a point he himself could not minister that's the height of it all and after that moses had made demand of the presence and god had assured him that the presence of God was going to go with him. He still made a demand. He said, your glory, I want your glory. That the height of God's presence is the glory of God. It's called the Shekinah. Everybody said the Shekinah. You don't have this always and every time in a meeting. If you listen to great men of God, I told us this last week. They will keep making reference to certain meetings that change their lives. Certain meetings that you literally could feel God in that is called the Shekinah glory. Those are the three dimensions. And I tried to talk to us yesterday about the person of the Holy Spirit. How that he's not a wind. He's not even the dove. All of these things we are using scripture metamorphically. They are, they are metaphors for his presence. Things that are used as symbols or in the similitude of his personality. Hallelujah. So when we say he descended like a dove, we don't mean he's a dove. When we use the oil to anoint you, we, we don't mean he's the oil. No, it's just a symbol. When the wind showed up in Acts of the Apostle 2 and then the clothing tongues of fire, these things are not the Holy Spirit. They are just symbols of his presence. So when you get to heaven, you are not going to be shown a bird flying all through the heavens. And then uh, maybe they tell you now this is the Holy Ghost flying around. No, 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 no. He's a personality. I told us last week he's a person. He has a form. He has a personality. Hallelujah. And that's important. And I shared with us how that the Holy Spirit has emotions. He has emotions. He can be grieved. He can be offended. He can be angry. And then the Bible tells us that as believers, we have the propensity of grieving the Holy Spirit. Then he advised and admonished us that grieve not. We should not grieve the person of the Holy Spirit. Right from the Old Testament into the New, again and again we are told not to grieve the person of the Holy Spirit. Again and again. Never are we told anywhere not to grieve the Father. Never are we told anywhere not to grieve the Son. But we are told again and again not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. He's so dear to the Father. So dear to the Son. That they don't want anybody to grieve him. To a point that the Son himself said, 
that when you sin against the Father and the Son, you'll be forgiven. But that any blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. His emotions are so powerful. He's so tender. Powerful at the same time, tender. Hallelujah. This is a recap of last week. He's called many names in scriptures. He's called the spirit of glory. He's called the spirit of adoption. He's called the spirit of power. He's called many things in scriptures. And then it's important that we know this. So whenever his presence showed up in a place, shows up, we say the presence of God is here. And I told us last week how that... Um, in the Old Testament, there was a tabernacle that was a picture of um, the presence of God and the dimensions of God's presence. How that when you came into the first dimension of the court, it was called the outer court. And I showed us the things we found there. And then we made progress to discuss the holy place. And then we discussed the holy of holies. And I want to take the teaching from there this night. Everybody said the ark of his presence. Say it again, the ark of his presence. The ark was usually a symbol of the presence of God in the Old Testament. Maybe you add the volume a little, please, for me. It was a symbol of the presence of God in the Old Testament. And it was so sacred. Each time the people wanted to engage in a thing, either battle or wanted to do something so phenomenal in their territory, in their nation, they will always inquire. They will always go to the Lord and inquire. And then whatever the Lord said was what they did. And then the ark in their midst was a symbol of God with a man. God with man. Today we don't have the literal ark. What we have is the presence of God living in your bodies. And then the Bible tells us that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But let me give you a brief story about the ark. It was so powerful that where the ark was kept in the Holy of Holies, there was no literal light there. What was kept there was the literal Shekinah. The dimension of God's light was there. And then it didn't need oil. It didn't need a candlestick. What was there was the literal Shekinah. And it was so tall protruding out of the tent that if you are outside you could see the light and um, it reminds me of the revival that happened in the, in the United States the Azusa Street revival many of you have read of that revival how that when the meeting started there was a literal fire that came on the roof and another fire that came from heaven and then according to um, the history and the story, the revival took place like 100 years back in the United States. A fire, the flame of fire could go 50 feet tall. So if you are coming from afar, you could see the fire. It was like a pillar of cloud that walked with the children of Israel. This was the exact fire that was in the tabernacle and it was located above the mercy seat protruding to the roof. So that wherever you were coming from, you saw it. It was in the midst of the people while they walk into the canaan land but eventually so many things happened in scripture i'm trying to give us um, a story that i know will bless us at some point during the days of eli the bible tells us that there was a war that happened with the philistine and then when the battle became so severe that four thousand men were killed in the jewish nation the bible said they came home and picked the ark of the covenant and went with it to battle. And as soon as the ark arrived at the camp, the Bible said the people shouted. They were so excited. And when the Philistines heard the shout, the Bible said they were scared. They said, now the ark of the covenant is with them. And we are finished. We know that with this presence of God in their midst, we are dead. In fact, the Philistines made reference to how God dealt with the Egyptians parted the rest and did many wonders because they had the presence of God was with them. Unfortunately for the Israelites, they lost the battle. And listen carefully. The Bible said that the ark was stolen. They took the ark to their nation and kept it in the temple of their God. Many of you have read that story, right? Of course, the story is in your Bible. They kept it side by side with their God. The name of their God is Dagon. 
The Bible says it was kept side by side. Please come. This is where their God is standing, a statue. Anytime they wanted to worship the Philistine, they go in bow before it and worship. And the Bible said when they brought in the ark, they thought now they've gotten another God to add to their God. The Bible said they kept it side by side with their God. And when they woke up in the morning, they realized that their own God that was dead had walked before the ark. And then now he's fallen before the ark. Because you can't have two captains in one ship. And the Bible said they picked up their God and kept it again. They thought it was a mistake. Side by side with their God. And when they came back the next morning, it was not just falling, the head was off. The hands were off. The legs were off. All they had was the tongue of the body. Just lying down here. And the Bible said God broke out with plagues among the Philistines. They were so troubled with plagues and sicknesses. And fear came upon them. And then they called the laws of the Philistines and said, carry this ark away from us. We don't want to die. And they took it to another city in the Philistine nation. The city of, of, of God. And then the people of God too were troubled. Every nation was troubled for seven months. And finally they decided. I'm taking this story somewhere. They decided, let's return this ark back to the people of the Israel. We can't have it with us because we are dying. The presence of God is so powerful. I want to believe God only allowed them to conquer the children of Israel with the ark because the children of Israel have sinned against him. So now he's proving to them that you didn't conquer them because I was not in their midst. You conquered them because I was using you to punish them. Because it was like that, that each time the people of God offended him and they were not willing to come back to him, he will use a foreign nation to punish them until they return back to him so this time around the bible said they decided let's send the ark back and the bible says they built a cart something like a truck a wheelbarrow and then tied to it two donkeys and then told themselves let's put an offering on this cart because we've offended the god of the israelites they put an offering of gold and silver and all of these things and then look at what they said they are soothsayers said within themselves when we release these donkeys, if they find their way through Beth Shemash, a, a village or a city or a town in Israel, then we will know of a truth that the God of, of the Israelites did this to us. But if it takes another way, we will know that something just befall us. It was not God in the first place. And the Bible says as soon as they did that and released the cart, straight away it followed that same road. And then went to the nation of the, I mean, the Israelites and went to the exact city. And when the people of that city started coming, the Bible said they celebrated. They were so happy. They offered sacrifices and kept the ark with them. And some of the people of that nation, knowing how sacred the ark was, the presence of God, the Bible said they went and looked into the ark. Remember, I told us last week that it was only the high priest, right? And he did that how many times in a year? once in a year this time around the bible said the people of the nation or of that city went and looked and fifty thousand of them died that day fifty thousand in one day they cried out we are tired of having this thing here we can't be finished like this and they had to call another city that was close by come and carry the ark from us and the bible said they took it from there to another city and it was there for 20 years throughout the reign of samuel and then the reign of Saul for 26 years. Listen carefully. Saul reigned in Israel for 26 years and never cared where the ark was. Never cared where the presence of God was. As a king of a nation, there are many believers like that who don't care really about the presence of God. What they want is their needs should be met. And as soon as Saul left the throne and David came on board, the first thing David did was, let's look for the Ark of Covenant. Let me show you from scripture. Give us the book of Samuel. Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me. 
Only you can satisfy my soul. Satisfy my soul. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Can satisfy my soul. So the second chronicles. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Can satisfy my soul. That thing three. Media is habit. Sorry, first chronicles. Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy my soul. Sound, if you can help me with your feedbacks, I'm truly not yet satisfied with this sound. Are we there? Or let's start from verse 1. Let's start from verse 1. We'll read through. Only you can sir. And David consulted with the captains of thousands and hundreds and with every leader. Uh huh. And David said unto all the congregation of Israel, If it seem good unto you, and that it be of the Lord our God, let us send abroad to all our brethren everywhere that are left in all the land of Israel, and with them also to the priests and the Levites, which are in their city and suburb, that they may gather themselves unto us. Verse 3. And let us bring again what? The ark of God to us. For we inquire not of it in the days of Saul. It has been out of our nation for 26 years. Let us bring it back. And it leads me now to my point of interest. David is a man that so understood the presence of God. David is a man that had weaknesses but knew his strength. Had weaknesses but knew his strength. As soon as he became king, let's bring back the presence of God. We cannot be in our nation without the presence. We are not secured without the presence. And the Bible tells us that they return back the ark. And watch this carefully. David lived his life and at some point the Bible says he fell. Committed a sin. The Bible says he slept with a woman. And then killed that man. And the Lord was not happy. And the Bible said God sent a prophet to him by name prophet Nathan. And when Nathan arrived, the Bible tells us that Nathan started speaking to David in a parable. There was a king, there was a man in the nation who had so many, so many sheep, so wealthy. But then in a certain day, the Bible said he had, sorry, yeah, the Bible speaking now in his Proverbs, that he had visitors. And the Bible said he went and caught the donkey of a man or the goat of a man. Um, this guy is poor, he just has one. The Bible said he caught his ram or goat, whatever it is, and killed it, prepared for his guest. And before the prophet finished talking, the Bible said the king was angry. He asked a question, who is that man? Is that man in Israel? If that man is in Israel, he deserves to die. We should look for him and kill him. While he's yet speaking, the Bible said the prophet told him, oh king, you are the one. You killed Uriah and had his wife. There are many women in Israel. Wouldn't you have had any of them? They were all at your disposal. But you decided to kill a man to have his wife. And the Bible says as soon as David had that, that's when he wrote Psalm 51. Create a me. Create in me. A clean heart, purify me, purify me, create in me a clean heart, so I might worship you. Cast me not away from your presence. Please don't take your spirit from me and restore the joy of salvation so that I might worship you. So that I might worship you. And the Bible said while he was talking, 
even God was touched. David was not a perfect man. This is where I start my teaching tonight. Listen carefully. There is no one man I know in scripture that was a perfect man. There is no one man I know in the scripture that was mightily used of God that was a perfect man. Many of them either had character problem or they had deficiency with background. One of these was always limitation with whoever God used. For David, he had a problem. For Moses, his problem was that he stammers. He can't talk very well. For Jeremiah, he said, I'm a child. I'm not exposed. For the apostles, they were not learned. They were ordinary fishermen. For Paul, he was a murderer. Somebody who has killed. According to human vetting, these guys should not be used by God. Listen carefully. As soon as you know your weakness, please look for the presence of God. As soon as you realize that there is something you can't do effectively, either by reason of your background, my parents didn't have the money, my parents don't have money, I understand. I didn't go to the university, I understand. I don't have uncles that can help me with money, I understand. My parents don't have a job, understand. But brothers and sisters, you have an advantage. You do have an advantage. This is one of the things I found out early about my life, brothers and sisters. While growing up, I realized that the family I came from didn't have all the money. I realized that we didn't have everything we wanted. But I knew that if I could lay hold of the presence of God, my life can become a wonder. And from a very young age, I decided to be different. I decided to chase his presence. And this word could be for someone here tonight. You blamed everybody around. Stop blaming people and look for the presence of God. What you are looking for in people can be found in one person. A personality. What you are crying about and begging people to have. You can have everything when you find this personality. I have a past. My past is not exactly nice. No problem. For the valley of my life is how much of me I carry. It's not that what it done. Yeah. And the impact of my life is how much of you people see. And the other part of the song, I want you at all cost in your fullness and glory. This is what a lot of you are supposed to be doing right now, right now, right now. Where you look for his presence, Lord, whatever it will cost me. Like David, remember, David did not start on the throne, he started in the wilderness. And the Bible speaking, he said, I have found David, my servant, in the wilderness. And with my holy oil have I anointed him. It was the same David now that told us that one I desire and one thing do I seek that I might dwell, that I might stay in the presence of God. Three times a day, David went into the temple to worship. Six times a day, he prayed. A man of the presence. I know I have weaknesses, but I can get an advantage. You might, you might be a man of God here. You might not be the best preacher. But you can get the presence of God. It will make all the difference. All the difference. You might not be the most eloquent. No problem. But you can have access to his presence. In your business, you might not have all that it takes. But you can have access to his presence. For this one, there is no monetary value attached. All that is attached to it is your willingness to stay with him. To stay with him. And like I told us last week, never think what I'm talking about now is for preachers. No, no, no. For every believer, every believer, David had a relationship with God. Let me show you the order. When a man gets born again, there is an order he must follow. The first is that he must seek relationship with God, with the Holy Spirit. Relationship, relationship. It starts from relationship. 
there must be a relationship and it is quite unfortunate these days that when people get born again the first thing we introduce them to is power the first thing we introduce them to is the prosperity message the first thing we introduce them to is the possibilities of God but listen carefully there is nothing wrong with that but if that's what we introduce you to like the lady who did the spoken words he said um, I think she made a very profound statement that the power of God without his presence is a liability right very powerful very powerful and unfortunately that's what we keep looking for I want to carry power I want to carry this and that and that and that listen carefully if you don't have a relationship with the Lord forget about power if you get that power that power will kill you if you get that power that same power will destroy you if you get that power that same power will make you become arrogant make you become proud and you will be the one to destroy yourself so the first in the order of priority is relationship everybody say relationship and you get this first by being born again now that you are in christ in fact i'm of the opinion that as soon as people are born again the first thing we must introduce them to the first personality is the holy spirit let them know who this person is let them know that all the possibilities in the kingdom are surrounded or uh, are, are shrouded in, in the personality of the spirit of god let them know that everything they will ever need in life is in one personality the holy spirit you want to know jesus you want to love jesus you want to be passionately in love with jesus meet the holy spirit meet the holy spirit there must be a relationship there must be a relationship there must be a relationship i have a relationship with him forget about all of this um you are the rose of sharon let me shock you there are a lot of people that come on stage and say all kinds of things and they don't have a relationship with you to be very honest you are the rose of sharon you are the power of this and that and that of the ages to come you are the this and that and that and that and i'm sure the holy ghost will be standing by and saying my god is it me you are talking about or somebody else because as long as i know you and me i don't think you do this in your secret place you only do it when you see a congregation there are a lot of people like that a lot of people no relationship what they have is this atmosphere they come and leverage on it many pastors are a victim of this many church leaders are a victim of this they have this 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 flamboyant language that expresses this you've been in church for a while why can't you talk like us so you can talk everything around like us but you truly don't have what you have relationship we must teach people and this is what i'm teaching you tonight in case you are not born again it starts from there we're going to give you an opportunity so but beyond that you should know him for yourself a personal encounter a personal relationship not just as your savior but as your lord a lot of people know him as their savior he's the one that saved me but they don't know him as their lord for you to know him as your lord it means you've handed over everything he becomes the lord the honor and the master if you know him as savior and you don't know him as your lord it's not complete it's not it he must be your lord and savior so the first is relationship and then it culminates into fellowship everybody say fellowship fellowship If you have a relationship with him it's not supposed to end there and then a lot of believers this is where they end they just have a relationship they know they are born again they know um somehow we we are in touch but they don't have fellowship with him participation that's the word fellowship koinonia participation partnership there must be there must be this is when you now have the uh, the consciousness of separating a time to spend with him alone how many of us sincerely have time with him you have to create it intentionally not somebody asking you to you have to intentionally create time like david he said three times i go into my place of, of, of fellowship three times every day 
and you know, I, I, I will talk a little on this because for many of us, our problem is that you want to spend two hours with God. You want to spend three hours with God. You want to spend five hours with God. And it's a problem for many. So you can start out, but you don't complete it. You start today, tomorrow you stop. You can even do it for three weeks and then you stop. For many, I have problem praying at night. Let me help you out. Don't start with praying one hour. Don't start with praying two hours. This is a school for many of you. When you go back this night, this is an assignment. Start with 20 minutes. Everybody say 20 minutes. Let me make it so practical. How many of you have smartphones? A lot of you, right? Go and look for three songs that blesses you. This is how we start. This is cool. Say amen. Say amen. Outside you are following. Say amen. God bless you. Look for three songs that blesses you. At least seven, seven minutes or thereabout. Put them together in one folder. One folder. Create it. If possible, name it. Soaking atmosphere. And then when it's time to pray, you know that the three songs are going to be 20 minutes exactly. So somehow, as the three songs are finishing, you know your prayer time is off. That is going to motivate you to pray. If you started and you're going to do two hours, three hours, before you reach two hours, you wake up in the morning. For many of you, you are like that. So you start out in your mind, um, uh, today, till, like, till 4 a.m., I'm not sleeping. Da, 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 da. 30 minutes later, what's even 30 minutes? 15 minutes. You're already looking at your bed and saying, Lord, for give her this beloved sleep. You use scriptures now to tell the Lord that what you are doing now is not. And after you sit by the bed and say, Lord, I'm still here. 25 minutes later, you're no longer there. You wake up in the morning angry with yourself. The problem is you. You want to start climbing a tree by jumping. Use 20 minutes. Let me tell you something about your, your configuration. Whatever does not take time, you are interested in it. Anything that has time allocated, you don't like it. This is why when you are going through Facebook, you like watching a short video. Anyone that is long, you just pass. I don't have time. You are, you are like a no-nonsense person. You like it when everything is summarized. For many of you, you don't like it. Uh, maybe you are not exactly here. For many of you, you thought by now I should have been rounding up my message. I'm just starting. Say amen. No, no, I'm just starting. I'm, I'm just starting. You like this sharp, sharp life. Let's just indomie generation. Indomie instant. If it's not instant, you don't. So start this way. Start this way. 20 minutes. Do it today. Do it tomorrow. One day you'll be surprised. Those songs are on repeat. You'll be surprised you are praying and the songs have repeated themselves twice and you don't know. Then you check your time. You pray for one hour. And you say, my God, am I the one? Yes, you are the one. You are the one. You don't start climbing a tree from the top. You start somewhere down here. When you go back home, I want you to do this and be very intentional about it. Be very intentional about it. It's called fellowship. There should be time you sit with the Lord. At least three chapters. Let me, let me eat the word of God. What if I do that and I don't understand anything? Keep doing it. I've taught you before that what you call revelation most time is a reward for consistency. You have to stay. You have to stay. So from relationship, fellowship, fellowship. It's at this point you begin to know the nature and the character of God. It's at this point you begin to understand the principles of the kingdom. It's at this point you begin to master spiritual laws. It's at this point of fellowship. The Holy Ghost can take you by himself and he starts teaching you things. When you see the cloud move this way, it's about to rain. He's the one teaching you. When you see something happen like this, this is what I'm about to do. For many of us, all the things you see happening around us, this is where we get it from. In the place of fellowship. In the place of fellowship. Where you just forget yourself and you are just there. Only you can satisfy only you can satisfy. 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 
Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. And I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. Yeah. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. I'll forever be chasing after you. I'll be chasing after you. One time, say, and I'll forever be chasing after you. Forever, and I'll forever be chasing after you. After you. Yeah. I'll be chasing after you. after you. That you can do this for one hour. You can do this. This is what we call fellowship. Fellows in the same ship. Huh? Communion. Common union intimacy into me see this is what we call fellowship you have to have this as a believer otherwise you might live a defeated life brothers and sisters and this is not a prophecy this is what can happen if you don't have this kind of time with God you might live a defeated life it is after this one that you will go into the next partnership and you know amazingly what a lot of people want is partnership they want to see the Holy Ghost do things through them but they don't have this one, it's a lie it's a lie, I came up and I'm singing and cheers are flinging every people are under the anointing, it doesn't just happen that dimension, you don't get it cheap you get it at, I mean on account of this one, fellowship 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 I'm teaching you the way, I teach you things that you can apply and see the result, if you apply this thing and it does not work for you, come back come back. There is a drone but we will go back there and I will show you what you might be missing. This thing can work for everybody. Everybody. Before partnership, there must be fellowship. Lord, use me to do mighty things. He's also willing. But there are things you must learn. You have to become a student in this school of the spirit. He will to teach you the moves of the spirit. He will, he will have to teach you the signs of the spirit. So what happened? When you begin to feel your hands on fire, what's the Lord saying? These are the things you learn. For many of you, you've been going through this already. It's a proof that you're having time with Him. You stay in your place of prayer and then you begin to feel sensation all around you. You must stay with the Lord to know what those things mean. You have to stay. You have to stay. For many, they are too in haste. You don't even pay attention. When the glory of God is oozing into your room, that's when you are leaving. You have to do this thing. You have to. You have to. It's a requirement for this end time. Otherwise, truly, a lot of people will be victims of circumstances. You are a lot of people. A lot of people. I'll be chasing after you. It took Jesus three and a half years. Three and a half years to teach his disciples what I'm teaching you now. Three and a half years. At some point, he sent them out on practicals. Let me show you what your life will reflect when I'm gone. Go out, go and heal the sick. That's partnership. When they went out and saw it happen, they were excited. He said, Come back. We are not done with the lectures. We are not done. We are not done. Come back. Come back. For many of us, we will never have come back. Never. Me, a cripple, what? Me, a blind ass. So, what, what am I coming back to do? Oh, God, to the ends of the earth, ministry. Jesus would have looked for you, and you are no longer in Samaria. You are now in Bethany. You see it? Let us not over. Come back, come back. The Bible says he sat with them again for another time. When he is leaving, he did not even allow them to move out. He said, wait, wait, wait. These things will not just happen until you are in deal. 
with power is partnership. Partnership. I know you are a weakling. I know you are not school. I know you are not um, exactly exposed. No problem. No problem. But can you understand the things of the spirit? I was teaching the foundation class and I told them spirits are not illiterate. We don't have illiterate spirits. No, 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 no. You are only illiterate as a spirit when you don't have connection with either God or Satan. But spirit by nature are not illiterate. So even if your mind did not go to school, please go to the school of the spirit. The Holy Ghost can speak your language. Are you aware? I'm telling you, he can communicate to you in your language. He will train you up. And your life will become a wonder. I've shared this story with us and let me share it again. A woman I heard about who is into farming. Anytime her goat is sick, this is how she calls the goat and lay hand on the goat. In the name of Jesus, I know what I've carried. Be healed right now and a goat will recover. Goat. For you, your business is, is with human beings. Your business, your interaction is with human beings. How much of God, how much of Him do you carry? You want partnership, there must be fellowship. Then eventually the last is results. Your life will emit results in ways it will amaze you. Beyond your age, beyond your exposure, result. Result. So relationship with the Holy Ghost gives birth to fellowship. Fellowship will birth partnership. And it will all culminate into results. Tangible results. There are dimensions of results you will never see if you are not in partnership with the Holy Ghost. There are dimensions of results you will never see. Never. I mean never. For instance, what dimension of God do you carry that transform an addicted drunkard? that transform a worldly guy in matter of two, three months and he's becoming a kingdom person. Transformation is not possible without the presence of God. Salvation is not even possible. You preach to everybody and they slap you. You preach to everybody and they are not willing to listen. You go to evangelism and no one person gives his life to Christ. Something is missing. Something is missing. The presence of God. The Holy Spirit. The day you have him, you will command results in ways you will be surprised. You will command results in ways you will be amazed. Results. He's the reason behind all the mighty results we saw in the Bible. I'm telling you, he's the God of the Bible. He is the one that pioneered all the massive moves in the scriptures. He is the one that moved with our fathers of faith till now. He is the one that is responsible for all of the things you see in this house. The presence of God. The presence of God. The powerful song they sang. Your presence is heaven. Heaven to me. Hey, your presence is heaven, heaven to me. We're singing, oh Jesus, oh your presence. Jesus. Oh, Jesus, your presence, your presence is heaven to me. Jesus prophesied in the book of John 14. Can we have it, verse 12? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believed in me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works than this shall he do, because I go to my Father. 
if you stop here, you are not getting it complete. Let's jump to verse 15. Because he showed them how it was going to happen. Verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandment, then watch the equation here. You will do the great works because you believe in me. No, 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 no. There is a personality you must come in partnership with. Next verse, please, media, please. And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another comforter that He might abide with you forever. Uh huh. Who is this comforter? Everybody want to read. Even the Spirit of Truth. Greater works are not possible without the Holy Spirit. Forget it. Forget it. It was in the same chapter. Few verses later, He showed you how it was going to happen. He said, The world cannot receive Him because they don't see Him. But for you, you know Him. In case you don't know him, you have to pay the price to knowing him. The Bible says, for they that do know they are God, they shall be strong and they will do exploit. You see the exploit prophesied here? It is tied to your knowing the personality and that personality is the Holy Ghost. If you don't know him, forget it. Forget it. Forget it. You want to rise in this age, the host, he has prophesied mighty works in business. In academics, mighty works. In ministry, mighty works. In career, mighty works. What is the definition of mighty works to you? For many of you, mighty works mean you rise to a height of financial dominion. Because it's a necessity for your ministry and life assignment. For many of you, mighty works here means academic excellence. You've been struggling as a student. Mighty works through the spirit. For many, your company is supposed to rise. To begin to have your office complex in a skyscraper, say amen to that. Mighty works tied to your personality, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. Your little business can grow. Who told you the business should remain small? Who told you? I'm challenging you. You've done that business for one, two, three years, and it's remaining like that. Come on now. Do you not know that after three years, you will ask the gardener to cut down the tree if it doesn't produce? Challenge yourself. It can be more. It can be more. It can be more. And it is tied to your knowledge of him. Your understanding. That's why I shared about fellowship. You have to stay with God. For many of you, you have to stay with him and ask him questions about your career. Yeah. Stay with him. Ask him questions about fashion. Ask him questions about law. Ask him questions about medicine. One of my dear ladies called and then she was telling me she's a doctor. He said, um, Daddy, do you know I will be sitting like this with patients and as I'm talking, I will be asking the Holy Ghost, is this all? And the Holy Ghost will tell me things about them they've not told me. And I'll tell them, but you didn't tell me this and that and that and they start crying. He said, Doctor, I didn't want to say this one. He said, but I know it already. And she told me, every day I'm going to work in the morning, I go with excitement because you introduced me to the Holy Ghost. Listen, if your career doesn't get you excited on Monday morning, you are not yet there. For many of you, tomorrow is Monday, you're already angry. Your pain is that you are going to that job you don't like. For many, they are going with excitement. In case you are very sure that's where you are supposed to be, except that you are not doing well, please engage him. The Holy Ghost can give you word of knowledge in medicine. Huh? The Holy Ghost can give you word of knowledge in academics. The Holy Ghost can remind you of business strategies. Don't neglect him. He prophesied greater works, but it is tied to your personality. It is tied to your knowing a personality. How many business strategies have you received from him? You know, the problem is that many of us don't spend time with him. You think you only get these things in seminars. You've attended 50 seminars, no one idea. Some of you will pay money to enter. You come out like, it's like the guy confused you more than you enter. Brothers and sisters, I not sit with the one. They're all knowing. They're all knowing. Sit with him. Tell, Lord, this is my ministry you gave me. Am I truly called? Yes, you are truly called. What is the strategy for the next level? I'm tired of being on this level. I've copied and pasted every strategy I see, or, I mean all around. I've done posters, nobody came. I've done this, nothing happened. Give me a customized. I can see with the eyes of my spirit. I can hear 
a sound of a new church marching that will be in partnership with the Holy Ghost. And I know these are the days of His Spirit. <laughs> And the nations will be willing, doors of nations will open. The people will be willing. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 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 surprised how Peter's life turned out to be a wonder? Are you not surprised how the doubting Thomas became a wonder? He told them to wait. I truly, truly believe that as soon as everybody is born again, the next person you meet is the Holy Ghost. All of our advantages are shrouded in one person. One. He is even the one that helps you know Jesus. Are you aware? So any attempt to teach you Jesus without meeting him is still wrong. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You will hear theories. One time a guy was told Jesus died for you. He said, was I the one that killed him? Did I ask him to die? He's a, I mean, he's already a proof that the Holy Ghost is not there. Because the day that guy will collide with the Holy Ghost, tell him those same words. He will come with tears. Have you seen people cry for other call? Yes. They, they have been in meetings again and again nothing happened then one day they enter a meeting the normal word is being preached and they are in tears they don't even know why there is a personality he is the one that can break down a hardened criminal and then all of a sudden the guy says I surrender he doesn't even know why he's surrendering brothers and sisters he is the one that the world is about to experience in this church I'm telling you his power will convict and convert people like Apostle Paul who are hardened we will see it before our very own eyes. Some of them are in your families. It looks like nobody can preach to them to accept. There is coming a time and it's not long from now. We are already stepping into it. And I'm telling you there will be a massive outpouring of the spirit. Nations will open up. Cities and territories will open up. Families will open up. Territories will open up. And listen. No man born of a woman will be able to stop this. I'm telling you, it has been prophesied again and again. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. In the last days, and in case you don't know, the last days are now. The last days are now. I will pour my spirit. Yes, you can be seated. I so love the ministry of the spirit because I've seen him work in our own life. Come here and see the crowd all around, outside and inside. It doesn't just happen because we went to school. No, 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 brothers and sisters. Whatever I tell you is a secret. Can be a secondary reason. But above all, the presence of God. I'm telling you, above all, the presence of God. Organization can fail. Excellence can fail. Was he not in this place that one of those days one of our generators went off? We have plenty gen. One went off. Some of you were in heat until they, they, they resolve it. Excellence can fail. Huh? Our organization and structure can fail. All of these things we do, packaging can fail. People can leave. But when you have the presence of God, nobody has left. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. The presence of God. I will do everything to remain in contact with him. Everything. I will pay whatever price to remain in contact with him. Price. Any price. Because I know my strength. My strength is in him. And on the day of the Pentecost, when that day was fully come, they were together in one accord and he showed up. Showed up. A guy that denied Jesus before his very eyes. In the absence of Jesus, he was the one that stood and preached about Jesus. 5,000 gave their life to Christ. You should know it was not ordinary. You should know it was not ordinary. 
after denying Jesus only you have been satisfied only you can satisfy I know you have weaknesses brothers and sisters everybody do I know you don't come from a family that has all the power and all the resources to give you everybody has one limitation or the other I know you've done things in the past that might not look like everybody has a track record I want you to cheer up tonight I'm calling you into fellowship I'm calling you into relationship with him with a very humble heart tonight, I will lead us in prayer in a very short while. We everybody will pray and say, Lord, introduce yourself to me. If truly you are still interested in me, then show me yourself. And many of you are going to be amazed with this short prayer because he will show himself to you guys in mysterious ways. For many of you, the encounters that will change your life are beginning from this night. Believe it. Believe it. Two things he told me you'll be doing tonight. For a lot of people, they are going to be filled with the Holy Ghost from wherever they are. Some of you have been looking forward to praying in tongues. You will have it tonight. And number two, he said there are people who are longing to know him. Early. The level you've known him in past is expiring. It looks like you are too used to that dimension. You need something new in him that will interest and fascinate you. You are about to truly step into something. This night. This night. This night. For many of you that feel you are not qualified for this, you are qualified. No, he has qualified you. No one holds anything against you. I'm telling you, you've been qualified. Except if you are not born again, and if you are, you are qualified. If you are not, we're going to give you an opportunity shortly. And you will make things right with him. Next week, I'm going to share the keys to accessing his presence. But let me share one this night and we'll pray. I will just touch it a little and we pray. Brokenness or a broken contrite spirit. The word broken means damaged. <laughs> a broken and a contrite spirit. Contrite means repentant heart. You are easily moved to repentance easily move to repentance when you grieve him you don't take long to say lord i'm sorry lord i'm sorry and a broken heart brokenness there means allowing god to damage your flesh so that you can carry his presence huh if i check your life i can tell the degree to which you carry the presence of god by the damage that has been done to your flesh if your pride is still intact, you are far from it. Listen carefully. If your ego is still intact, you are far from it. You must come to a point where you drop your crown. It is called brokenness. As soon as David heard God was not happy with what he did, Uriah and Bathsheba, his wife, immediately he broke down. It's called brokenness. Lord, forgive me. I'm of all men, the chiefest of all sinners. Forgive me cleanse me and he cried he was the one that wrote this in Psalm uh, 51 verse 17 I believe he said a broken heart and a contrite spirit Lord you will not despise that if you truly have a repentant heart you did it wrong but you asked God for mercy Yeah. naturally you are a proud person but you are learning to drop your crown listen if I check the humility in your life, I can tell you whether you are with God or not. I'm telling you, the more of God you know, the humbler you become. I'm telling you this. Just help these guys under the anointing. If I check your life and I see arrogance, listen carefully. Even if you have power, people are falling here and there. What you have is power, it's not the of God. Believe what I'm telling you. Forget this arrogance that happened everywhere. You see young men, because you can touch one or two and they fall pride has carried you. You think you are anointed. What you have is power. It's not the present. No wonder you are still struggling. You are still struggling. When I check the humility in your life, when I check the damage done to your flesh, 
where you have lost touch with your humanity, you have lost touch with that part of you that want to prove a point, is already a proof you are getting in touch with God. An old man once said this, listen carefully. He said, God is like a mountain. The higher you go, the more you fear him. Have you ever climbed a mountain? Have you ever climbed any mountain? Mountain climbers. The higher you go, you are now scared of it. Because if you fall from that height, it's dangerous. He said, that's how God is. The more you climb high in God, the more you climb high, the humbler you get. You're scared. It's called reverence. It's not fear, phobia. It's called reverence. You rat Adonai. Reverence for God. If I check your life, I'm telling you, a lot of people have come around me. Is that because you are too simple and accessible? Why wouldn't I be? Why would I be? I know this. The men who truly carry God. Ah. Ah. I want to forever be a child of God. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, you, you can call man of God, but me, I know my office when I'm with him. I'm a child. I'm a child. I'm a child. I've told some of you, you don't want to see me when I'm having my time with God. Many of you, if you see me, you might be discouraged. I'm telling you. I'm telling you the truth. Because I, I think some of you used to think if I'm in my place of prayer, I will scatter everywhere in my house. No. If you see me having time, you might be discouraged to pray. I don't go to God as a man of God. I go to him as a child of God. I don't go to him as a man of God. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, come a contrite heart, a broken spirit is one of the major ways to accessing the presence of God. Where you are now dead to the flesh. Dead to the flesh. I'm telling you, your spirit begin to carry his glory. You begin to, I've told you this before, listen carefully. Jesus said, until the wheat of a corn falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Let me show you something. And you are in the presence of God and you are genuinely in his presence. Because there are many times we go into the presence of God and we just go to prove a point. Imagine these guys in the presence of God. Please just kneel down. Let's do that illustration today again. Let's assume he's having time with God. Genuinely. Not, not all of these things will fade here and there. There is a part of flesh that dies every time you show up in God's presence. Every time. The way you are seated down and listening to me like this, there is a part of your flesh that is dying. For many, you will walk out of this meeting and look for pride in your life. You won't find it again. Believe it. Whether you say amen or not, some of you will, will have it say amen. So this guy is spending time with God. This is what happened. Let's assume this part of him is flesh. If this part of him falls off, immediately this part of him is being replaced by the glory of God. So this hand automatically starts carrying the glory and the peace of God. It's at that point he can come to a meeting and stretch forth his hands. And everybody thinks it's an ordinary hand. But before you know, things begin to happen. And you're wondering what happened. This guy is no longer ordinary. He's no longer ordinary. It's at this point his ears are being replaced by the glory of God. Listen, to a point he can literally be a reflection of God's glory. Remember, Moses was with God for 80 days. 40 days, 40 days. The Bible said when he came back, his face was literally shining. Is that it? What happened to his real self? He was covered. Each time flesh dies, any part of you that falls off flesh is being replaced by the glory of God. So to the degree to which you allow yourself to die is the degree to which you carry the glory of God. If I see the dimension of glory in your life, it can be directly attributed to the dead that has happened to you. I'm telling you. Brokenness. Brokenness. A contrite spirit. So anytime you are spending time with God, you have to be conscious of this. A part of my flesh is being damaged. It's falling off. It's falling off. And as it falls off, it's being replaced 
with the glory, the Shekinah, the glory. And tonight, it's my desire that God will find people here that will carry his presence in a manner never imagined before. He'll never leave us. He said that he will forsake us. He'll walk beside us. And that is all he had us. The sun will smite me. And the moon it will not mark. You walk beside me. That is all the man has. people you admire this is what happened to them this is one of the major things they possess brokenness a contrite heart Ketrin Kuman, the one we've loved and talked about again and again in the body of Christ this was one of her strengths she was not such a woman that went to school like you expect she was not such a woman that had strength at some point she told the Lord if you can use anything here is something if you can use a donkey, here am I. I don't have anybody. I don't have anything. I'm not looking up to anything. Here am I. Drunkenness. One time our father here at Debo, he had to burn all his certificates. I'm not telling you to burn your own. When they asked him why, he said, I burnt it so that I won't have a cause of returning back. I burnt it so that I won't have anything to bounce back. So I have to stay with God and remain humble to get this thing. You that don't even have those kind of certificates in the first place. Why not make him? Why not make him? You have complained too much why things are not working. Why not partner with him? This thing can work. Have you not seen people who didn't go to school making things work? It can work. It can work. When people rise in life, check who is behind them. It's either the Holy Spirit or a spirit somewhere. There is always a spirit. There is always a spirit. And in case you've made up your mind that you are not going to go the other way, you are not going to visit the harbourless, you are not going to carry any charm or something, that's fine. But if you are remaining in this kingdom, don't just remain on the basis of relationship. No. Grow from there. Enter fellowship. Grow from fellowship. Enter partnership grow from partnership and begin to have tangible results. I'm telling you, these results are only accessible through him. And it will require so much. For many of you, it will require you dropping your mouth. You gossip too much. You might have to drop it. For many of you, it will require you dropping pride. You are too arrogant. You don't even have anything now. But pride is almost killing you. It might require it being dropped. For many, it's ego. Anywhere you go, your shoulders are high. You are too cocky. You don't even have anything. Why not count? For many, that might be the requirement tonight. I'm telling you. For many, it's laziness. You don't even have a job now. You have all the time. Spend time with God. You don't even do it. When you get the job you are looking for, we will see. This is the best time. Brothers and sisters, that whatever it will cost you, whatever, whatever. I've been giving a lot of people assignment. Maybe I give everybody tonight, and you will, you, you will, you will, <laughs> you will submit it next week. I've told you this is cool. Do it all through this week. Come back next week. I will ask you. And if you don't do it, you will carry your tear on your head. Say amen. While I teach for two hours. Every morning before you step out of your house, spend 15 minutes with God. If you know you are leaving 7.30, when it is 7 what? Finn, start it. Start it. 
Don't ever come and say I was too late or I was... No, 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 no. You know when you usually go out. Before you step out, spend 15 minutes with God. You are not asking God for money. No, 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 no. What you are doing is, Lord, I love you. You are all I have. If the whole world leaves me and I'm with you, I'm still satisfied. I love you dearly. You are my everything. Do this every day for one week. In the morning, in the afternoon, look for a 15 minutes again and do this. If you are in your office, take break. You have break time. Don't you eat? Even if it's Bangkok, I think they give break. Take out that break. Stay 15 minutes. Have that time with God. In the evening when you return, do it again. How many times? Three times. Will you do it? Will you do it? Let me tell you something. If you truly do this, I, I, I gave an assignment to one of our dear ones here. When the person did this for three months, one day in the workplace, shook hand with somebody and the person said, ah, there is fire in your hand. Brothers and sisters, this thing can work. The problem with us is that we are too busy and we are busy doing things that don't add to us. Do this thing. Come back. Some of you will come back next week and tell me, no, I feel differently. I feel different. Here's a secret. If you keep doing this for one month, two months, three months, one year, you will literally become a career of God's presence. I'm telling you, let people bring charm and plant in your workplace. You will match it and pass. Everybody say match and pass. I think that's a popular saying like that. I'm, the reason why we are affected by too many things, you don't carry anything. You, like, oh my God. From today, may God dry up laziness from your life. And may he replace it with hunger and passion for himself. In the name of the Lord. Please be on your feet. Let's pray. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Only you can satisfy. Kabarana yeah. Bakosa. We're going to pray just two prayers and I will speak of our lives and we are done tonight. Lift your hands and bless the name of the Lord tonight. Say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for your word inside, outside. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Just two prayers. You're going to pray from the depth of your heart. Oh Lord, I thought I knew you, but I want to know you in another dimension. Holy Spirit of God, can you reveal yourself to me? Can you reveal yourself to me? Lift your voice and pray. Inside, outside. Lord, reveal yourself to me. Lord, reveal yourself to me. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. I thought I had a relationship. I thought I understood your ways. But Lord, I, I want to go deeper in my experiences. I want to go deeper in my understanding. I want to go deeper in my knowledge of you. I want to know you. I want to experience your glory. I want to experience your presence like never before in my career, in my academics, in my job, in my ministry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to pray one more prayer. Say, Lord, as I go to have time with you this week, may I have an outstanding encounter with you. Visit me in my time of fellowship. I truly want to have an experience. I want to know you in person, Holy Ghost. I want you to reveal Jesus to me. Can you lift the voice and pray one more time? Come and pray one more time. Come and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you lift your hands wherever you are? Just lift your hands. Inside, outside, lift your hands. Let the Lord himself tonight visit us. Lift your hands. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Don't sing, just lift your hands. And ransom captive Israel. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. And ransom. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. 
let's let it see. Oh, pass in the name of our God. I hear the light. I adore the lion. I adore the Lamb of God. I worship the lion. I worship the Lamb. I have. Lift your hands. There are people the Lord is introducing himself to you tonight. And there are people that a fresh baptism is coming on you. A fresh baptism. A fresh baptism. Inside, outside. A fresh baptism. Hey, hey, hey. You used to have time with the Lord. Your relationship with Him was very strong. All of a sudden, something happened. You can't account for it again. There is a visitation tonight. There is a visitation tonight. There is a visitation tonight. Lord, at the count of three, with your people. Touch your people inside, outside. Let them know you. Let them touch you. Let them experience you. Let the relationship be restored. Let the fellowship be restored. Let the encounters be restored. In the name of Jesus, at the count of three. One, two, three. You have it now. Be all shut into it. Hallelujah. When he is come, the Bible says he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Lift your hands. You are going to shout the name Jesus. If you are yet filled with the Holy Ghost, you want to pray in tongues, this is your time. Or you need an impartation of God's glory in another dimension, this is your time. Lift your hands. Wherever you are, lift your hands, inside, outside. You are yet to pray in tongues as we shout the name Jesus. I want you to open your mouth. Utterance is going to be given to you. At the count of three, please, the instrument you help us. Are you ready? Lift your hands. That is a fresh baptism of fire with the evidence of tongues. With the evidence of tongues, some of you visions are restored. Some of you visitations tonight. One, two, inside and outside. Three, shout Jesus. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Receive it now. Shatabala da 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 katela. Rate kete pa kapala kate. Shotopa rata prete katela. Shekete te de de A fresh baptism. A fresh infilling. A fresh baptism. Fresh release of fire. 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 A baptism of 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 fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Baptism of fire and grace. Le kabarata bakaski bande kebariataka. In the name of Jesus, I decree that prayer lives are being restored. 
fellowship will be restored relationships are being restored in the name of the Lord Jesus go back tonight and never be the same you become another man you become another person may the spirit of God begin to visit you in your closet in the name of the Lord Jesus whatever has been lost in your personal time with God has been restored tonight it has been restored tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus when you are here 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 those of you here can you lift your hands lift your hands you are around here lift your hands I see a visitation around here at the count of three. Oh God, visit your people now. One, help them. Two, three, have it now. Receive it. It's a touch. 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 When you are here, when you are here, help them when you are here. When you are here, 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 when you are when you are here, when you are here, when you are here, when you are here, Lift your hands, there is a touch outside now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray for a visitation. I pray for a visitation. Lord, as I pass by, let your glory help them, help them, help them. Let your glory, let your presence, let your glory, let your presence. You are here, lift your hands. You are in this upper floor, lift your hands. Lift your hands. Help that woman. Help her by the floor. Help her. Help her. Lift your hands on this room. In the name of Jesus, I stretch forth my hand right now. Let there be a visitation. Let there be a visitation. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Way to the back. Way to the back. Let there be a touch. In the name of the Lord Jesus. When you are here. This place, can you lift your hands? Let me have Osha stands on this road. Please ensure people don't fall on things. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. Father, as I pass by, let there be a touch of the Spirit. I stretch forth my hand right now over those people. I pray for them. We help this lady. Help them. Help them. I pray for a release of grace. Help them. I stretch forth my hand way to the back. In the name of Jesus, a visitation. In the name of Jesus, a visitation. Help him. Jesus. Jesus, lift your hands over here. Lift your hands. Way to the back. Lord, a visitation right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift your hands. All of us. Help. help this woman that is pregnant. Help her. Help her. Help this pregnant woman. Help her. Help this young man, help him. In the name of Jesus, all through at the back here, the overflow, I pray for a mighty outpouring. At the count of three, there are going to be all kinds of visitation right now, outside. At the count of three, lift your hands outside here. You are at the overflow here, lift your hands. At the count of three, one, two, and now three, receive it, a touch. All over the overflow, all over, all over, all over. All over, all over, in the name of the Lord Jesus.
Everybody lift your hands around here. Lift your hands. I stretch forth my hand over you right now. I pray for a visitation. Lord, separate your people. Usher them into new seasons, new dimensions. Right now at the count of three. One, two, three. Receive it. Go and never be the same. Never. very effective and may you begin to have series of encounters and visitations in the name of the Lord Jesus everything that you do with your hands will prosper from now your business will prosper your career will prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus you're coming back next week with a testimony in the name of the Lord Jesus we call it done in Jesus name now, while everybody remains standing, just remain where you are. The Lord is still touching people. If you know you are not born again, I talked about relationship with the Lord. While everybody just stands quietly wherever you are, you know you are not born again wherever you are, whether inside or any of the overflows, I want to give you an invitation now. <clears throat> Please, I want you to run forward quickly. And I've said, will only make sense to you when you are born again. Wherever you are, you are saying, I'm coming back home to the Lord, a new beginning tonight. I refuse to govern my life by myself. I want to hand it over to the Lord. Wherever you are, please come. Please come. Come quickly. Come quickly. I'm waiting for you. The Lord is talking to you. Let movement be minimized, please. Let movement be minimized, please. God bless you, my brother. Don't be the last person to come. If the Lord is talking to you, it means you are supposed to be here. Come. For many of you, as I talk, now even while I yet talk on relationship with the Holy Spirit, the Lord was already talking to you. Please come. This is the time to respond to him. Come quickly. Double up your step. You are coming from outside. We can wait for you. Come. I surrender to you. Please come. You want to rededicate your life. Maybe you are born again, but you cannot come to walk with God again. Please come. I feel there are a few more persons here to come. Please, we're waiting for you. Just come. You don't have to wait for tomorrow or check who is standing by your side before you show up. Come. Everything. before me, can you pray from the depth of your heart? Say, oh God, I believe in Jesus. I believe he died for me. And today, by faith, I receive into my heart eternal life. My sins are forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I'm born again. And I'm a child of God now. Thank you. Amen. Amen. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. I decree that the name of the Lord be named upon you. Let the grief of the enemy over your life be loosened, be broken completely. And may the Lord establish you in grace. Help you to love the Lord passionately and sincerely. You will grow in this grace and be rooted in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. We love you. And thank you for making up the key decision tonight. The Lord is going to keep and strengthen you. Please, our officers are going to attend to you. Can you just step this way? They will be right outside there waiting for you to attend to you. Please direct them this way. Direct them. Just go with them. Go with them. Try to direct them. Talk, talk to them, please. God bless you. 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 
God bless you. God bless you. All right. Um, while they go, if this is your first time of being in family worship, come We hope you've been blessed by this message. Keep walking in grace. For additional information, follow us on our Facebook page. Or you could visit us on our Telegram page, Family Worship Experience International.